Comedy legend Graham Linehan is the latest victim of cancel culture after his Edinburgh Fringe venue banned him from performing. The reason they gave for this is that they're an inclusive venue, showing they don't really understand what the word inclusive means. Banning people for the sake of inclusion is like sending farmers to the gulag for the sake of crop yields, which is actually usually the next step for socialists after banishing comedians. The replacement venue also cancelled on him, so the show went ahead on the steps of the Scottish Parliament, which, to be fair, hosts clowns all year round. All this cancelling was done by people who insist that they're the most marginalised people in society. Man, I wish I was so marginalised that I could silence anyone I want and force everyone to go along with what I think. These people aren't marginalised, they're the opposite of marginalised. In fact, everything we're told by the left is the opposite. Marginalised people can force us to bend to their every whim and think what they think. Diversity means only one opinion is allowed. Inclusion means people are excluded. Equality means some people's thoughts and feelings are far more important than other people's. And this cancellation shows that the fringe is done. It's not a fringe anymore. There's nothing edgy or countercultural about it. It's a monotone enforcement of establishment orthodoxy. There's nothing you'd see at the fringe that's edgier than anything you'd see in an advert for oven chips. And for all that people are kicking back against it, Linehan's cancellation shows that cancel culture is here to stay and is going to become harder to beat. The response from comedians was insane. A few good ones, such as Henning Venn and Elliot Steele, came forward and criticised the cancellation. A whole bunch of bad ones, such as Mark Grimshaw and dumpy transoid Jen Ives, came forward to slag Graham off. It's always good to hear from dreadful open mic comedians who couldn't sell out the backseat of a Nissan Micra about how the literal creator of Father Ted isn't valid as a comic voice. What was more surprising was to see established comedians come out and support the cancellation. Jo Caulfield is a perfectly good comedian, but she posted this cringy pic of herself in support of the cancellation. It's incredible to see a comedian celebrating the cancellation of another comedian. I mean, you'd have to be very sure that you're always going to be on the right side of accepted opinion to crow about this. The sands of acceptable opinion can shift quickly beneath our feet. Just a few years ago, J.K. Rowling and Graham Linehan were the perfect lefties with perfect opinions. Then suddenly, left-wing dogma changed to say that men can be women by saying that they're women, and any child who expresses the slightest bit of gender confusion should be referred to a gender clinic. And boom! Suddenly, by disagreeing on these points, J.K. Rowling and Graham Linehan became witches who must be excommunicated from the flock. When I pointed this out to Jo, she of course blocked me. Ironically, I'm not even gender critical anymore. I think that if left-wing people want to transition their children, who am I to stop them? Come near my kids and we'll have a problem, but with your own kids, you go for it. You have my full support. Who am I to warn you about the potential unforeseen consequences of sterilising and maiming your children? You just go ahead and remove your DNA from the gene pool and try and enjoy future family functions. And then someone revealed that Jo herself has expressed some distinctly terfy opinions, such as this tweet where she said, there are certain things, no matter how hard you try, you will never completely understand because you are not a woman. I'm sorry, but that is a fact. I wish it wasn't, but it is. So please do yourself a favour and shut your effing mouth. As a trans woman, I am offended. It just shows there but for the grace of God go all of us in front of the mob. Maybe we should try and show a bit of tolerance and not cancel people. And this is another nail in the coffin of the Edinburgh Fringe. It's been dying for years, partly because the SNP have restricted accommodation available to punters, partly because it's been taken over by ugly middle-aged women who hate comedy, partly because an industry cattle market just isn't necessary in an era where comedians such as myself can have a direct relationship with our audience via platforms like YouTube and Patreon. But mainly, the fringe is dying because it's moved so far away from its ethos of diversity and inclusion. The Fringe started as an alternative to the staid, curated Edinburgh Festival. The Fringe website says that the Edinburgh Festival Fringe is the greatest platform for creative freedom in the world. No individual or committee decides what should and should not appear. Anything is possible. Fringe audiences are encouraged to take risks and try something new. The Fringe was one of the 20th century's greatest innovations, a precursor to social media in providing a platform for anyone who wanted their voice to be heard. The Fringe continues to grow and evolve embracing new technology, audiences and ideas. Well, I've rewritten the Edinburgh Fringe ethos to be more accurate in 2023. The Edinburgh Festival Fringe is the greatest platform for the censorship of creatives in the world. A committee of self-appointed milk monitors decides what's permitted to appear. Only things acceptable to them are possible. 
Fringe audiences are prevented from seeing anyone take risks or try anything new. The fringe was one of the 20th century's greatest innovations, a precursor to social media in censoring voices that don't exactly match the establishment orthodoxy. The fringe continues to diminish and calcify, excluding new technologies, audiences and ideas. The fringe is supposed to lift up underrepresented marginalised voices, but it's a total myth that trans, queer, lefty voices are marginalised. They're the establishment now, represented across government, media, arts and business. Take a walk through Edinburgh, almost every poster is a drag queen on roller skates pulling flags out their arse. Genuinely underrepresented marginalised voices would be Brexiteers or Tories or gender realists like Graham Linehan. The good news is that Graham may be able to sue the venue that cancelled him because of his views. Under the Equality Act, gender critical views are protected. As another fringe venue, The Stand, found out when they cancelled Joanna Cherry for his, her similar opinions. Graham doesn't actually have despicable views. I've seen him perform. He does very funny jokes about pizza. He just thinks that women should sometimes have same sex only spaces and it's maybe a bad idea to sterilise and maim children. But even if he did have bad ideas, why not let him have a platform? Sunlight is the best disinfectant. Well, it's not. But still, maybe when they came up with the saying, sunlight is the best disinfectant, they hadn't invented Domestos. There are crimes against any incitement to violence or anything genuinely harmful, so anything genuinely harmful won't be said on stage. Comedy doesn't need to be policed anyway. We perform in front of a jury, the audience. If members of the public are willing to buy a ticket, who is anyone else to stop them? I'm more worried about the people who dictate to me what I'm allowed to say and do than I am about a comedian having a bad opinion. And is cancelling people like Graham Linehan even helping trans people? The Evidence shows that the combative, censorious approach of trans rights activists is actually turning people off their cause. Public support for transgender people being allowed to change their sex and their birth certificate has fallen sharply in two years, from 53% to only 32%. 33% of people feel that transgender opportunities have gone too far, as opposed to 32% who think they have not gone far enough. And this is despite the balance of public opinion being mostly tipped in favour of socially liberal views, except on this one particular transgender issue. The sad thing is that despite all the outrage, these cancellations are going to work. Venues are going to move the cancellations further up the chain. They're going to cancel performers before they're even booked so they don't face any outrage for booking controversial acts or face the blowback and legal threats when the acts that they've booked are cancelled. This happened to me. I was supposed to be going on tour this autumn, but my tour promoter, who normally just slots shows in with her chain of venues, couldn't find enough theatres to take me. It's not about ticket sales. Venues receive money from places like the Arts Council now, so there isn't that commercial imperative to book acts who'll fill seats. Instead, the people running these venues can act like gatekeepers and book acts that they think are important or worthy and refuse acts that they think are dangerous. I'm not bothered about my tour being cancelled. As a Scot, I'd obviously rather stay in doing nothing than go out and do my job. And I've got YouTube and Patreon, so I don't have that pressing need to go and shout at people in real life. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please share it and like and subscribe. And if you want to support me making these videos, you can become a patron from as little as £3 a month. You get access to special content and live streams and stuff like that. Okay, thanks for listening. I've been Leo Kearse. Bye. Bye-bye.